When we think about uh, atmospheric aerosols, we have to remember that they are a complex mixture uh, that is under one word, but uh, in reality uh, we have to uh, keep focus on composition, size distribution and even shape of uh, atmospheric aerosols. Uh, people typically see that aerosols impact visibility. So they see that, for example, visibility is reduced even to a few kilometers, even uh, some hundreds of meters because of atmospheric aerosols. This reduction in visibility uh, is also one thing that links already to the climate effects of aerosols. So atmospheric aerosols uh, directly influence the radiative fluxes uh, in the atmosphere. So for example, solar radiation uh, coming uh, from the sun uh, is then reflected or absorbed by atmospheric aerosols depending on the composition, size and shape of the particles. This is uh, called the direct effect where the aerosols directly alter radiative fluxes. Then there is also indirect effects uh, where the atmospheric aerosols uh, act as cloud condensation nuclei. In practice this means that the cloud droplets uh, they always form uh, on top of an existing aerosol particle. Now this uh, cloud activation of aerosol particles it is uh, uh, directly influencing cloud properties. It is influencing the cloud albedo, meaning that the, how much uh, radiation uh, is refle if re reflected back to space uh, from the cloud. It is also modifying the cloud dynamics. It can, for example, prolong the lifetime of the cloud, or it can uh, hinder uh, precipitation formation. So these direct and indirect effects, they both cause a climate effect uh, and if we look at the aerosol forcing, it is, for example, um, roughly half of the uh, CO2 forcing. If we go into looking what are the uncertainties related to aerosol particles and specifically their climate effects, we have to first focus on the sources of aerosols. There is both natural and anthropogenic aerosols. Natural aerosols, for example, sea spray or dust blown from a desert, uh, these cause huge masses of aerosols uh, going to the atmosphere. Now, if we, if we, for example, look at the oceans, we can certainly see from satellites uh, where sea spray aerosol uh, is emitted from the ocean surface. But still, this uh, vast quantity of aerosol mass, it is very difficult to constrain accurately. So we cannot know uh, in detail how much aerosol uh, is being emitted. Whereas the natural aerosol sources are difficult to constrain, so are, are also the uh, anthropogenic sources. To really know how much particles are coming from anthropogenic sources, we would need to know, for example, uh, what kind of fuel is being burned in furnaces, how clean the fuel is, uh, what is the type of furnace and what kind of cleaning methods there are, and uh, for example, uh, what is being cooked uh, on a furnace. All of these things are very difficult to constrain and uh, when we are looking at the climate effects of aerosols, we would need to know in detail the uh, anthropogenic and natural sources of aerosols, both in terms of their number and uh, mass emission. Now, some uncertainties are of course uh, then involved in how we describe the aerosols in different models. We can describe aerosol direct effects and indirect effects in models. The direct effects are uh, somewhat easier than the indirect effects. Even in direct effects we do simplifications, for example, we typically assume that aerosol particles are spherical, even though we know that, for example, dust particles are not spherical in real world. 
we also do uh, simplifications and we have uncertainties in how much aerosols are absorbing uh, radiation. For indirect effects, things get even more complicated. Indirect effects, so the activation of aerosol particles as a cloud droplet, uh, it is very difficult process itself. We need to know the size and composition in detail uh, and also we get uh, complications uh, from the cloud dynamics itself. Uh, clouds are very different. Uh, we need to know uh, how cloud forms, how it evolves and uh, how, for example, precipitation forms inside the cloud. And these are very small scale processes and very difficult to include in climate models. <laughs>